welcome to the second lesson for ExcelExposure.com. Today we'll be going over the level one examples for text related functions. This time I've taken an extract out of the functions spreadsheet and pasted it below. You can see this picture here actually isn't part of the cells. It's just a picture to show the formulas I'm going to be talking about or the functions and their description and how they are formed to the right. So I'm going to walk through an example here Sometimes when you have your data, it's not always in the best format. For example, in the yellow text you can see it says this band rules, but there are many spaces, the capitalization is all over the place, and so we want to clean it up. And so there's many different ways you can take text that you have in Excel and manipulate it to fit your needs. So the first formula would be the trim formula which you can see from below is it'll remove the spaces so it'll move it, remove any additional spaces from the text it won't remove them all but it will get rid of anything that's unnecessary so we type equals trim point to the l less fortunate worded text close the parentheses and hit enter and you'll see that it got rid of all of the additional extraneous spaces so if you have data with spaces all over the place or a variable amount of spaces and you want to make sure that there's only one between each word you can use the trim function proper which I'm going to show you next uh, actually it makes the capitalization so that each word starts with a capital letter so proper and I'm going to do the proper based off of the trimmed version because we're going to try to clean up this text in general and you could embed these formulas within each other but for now I'll just show you them separate so all I typed in you'll see here is equals proper and the reference and it changes it to exactly what I want which is everything with a first capitalized letter and then the rest is all lowercase so we've already taken the text from the yellow area and we've made it much cleaner just using two very simple formulas the find function is very important and is used a lot during text manipulation. In this case, we're going to replace one of the words from the text above, but first we need to find where that word is. So find is going to tell you where within the string or within the cell what number character your word starts at. So the, f the formula will be equals find. So find text would be the text that you want to find. So let's replace rules and make sure you put it in quotes so it knows you're talking about text and it's not a reference to another cell, comma, within text, meaning where am I trying to find it? I'm trying to find it within this, our new cleaned up text. And the start number, you can just, if, if anything is in brackets, it's optional, so I can leave it blank or I can put one if I wanted to start at one. But for now, I'll just leave it blank and this will tell me where rules is. So in cell C26, rules starts at character 11. So it's 11 characters in. If you counted it, you would see that it's this, which is 4, plus 1 for the space, 5, plus band, 4 is 9, 10 would be another space, and rules starts at 11. The search function will find text within another piece of text. It's, it's very similar to the find function, and I'll show you right now. So find text, we'll do the same thing, we'll look up rules within this. And you'll see they have the exact same result. It's not case sensitive, which could be beneficial. For the most part, I find myself using the find function, but you could also use search as well. Replace is used when you want to take something, take a text from a cell and replace some piece of it with something else. So in this case, we're going to replace the word rules with the word blows, just to make it a little bit more fun. So we do replace, and so the old text would be C26. That's what we're referring to as the, as the old, you know, what, what it is before we're, we do the replacement. The start number, which is where we want to start replacing text, we can use either the find or the search. I'll click on the search one just to make it easier because that's how the example is set up in the, in the book when you look at it later. Comma, 
number of characters. So we know that rules, the word, is five characters long. R-U-L-E-S. So we will put in five. And then, comma, the new text. So in quotes, we put blows. And we end parentheses. And you'll see that it took what was in the proper cell area and converted it into this band blows. Pretty simple. And also useful if you want to replace something on an aggregate level and you don't want to use the find and replace function. You can use it with formulas. Upper and lower are very self-explanatory. All you do is take upper, point to the text you want, close it, and it puts it all in uppercase. Same with lower. And so these are easy ways to take text that was originally in a very poor format and we can do many different things to it to change it into varying formats. And you can do this with any type of text that you have in files. Sometimes you get information in formats that is not necessarily the best. Some important formulas that I'm going to go to now involve taking pieces of text out of a cell. So the left function will take a certain amount of characters that you define from the left side of a cell. So if we were going to take the word this, we would do equals left. We're going to go to the replaced version. So within this text, it's going to grab whatever number of characters we tell it to. So since I know that this is four letters, I will put four, close the parentheses, and you'll see it has this. I'll skip to right because it's basically the same format. So if we wanted to take blows out of it, we could do the same thing where we point to 29, comma, number of characters. Here we'll put 8 for blows plus the three exclamation points. And it'll grab that. If you didn't want the exclamation points, you'd have to use either mid or a combination of different formulas to get that. For the mid function, it basically grabs somewhere in between the text, however you define it. So the format for mid, we will select the text that we've been replaced, I mean that we've been using, so cell C29. We're going to start at 6. So 6 would be, if we want to extract band, because we've already extracted this and blows, if we want to extract the middle word, we'd have to start at number 6, which would be this, which is 4, plus 1 for the space is 5, and so band starts at 6. So we're starting at 6, and we know band goes for 4 characters, so we end the parentheses, and you'll see that we've taken that, broken it up into the individual components. Now, the concatenate function, which is a word that isn't used too much, it just basically says you're going to take several different items and join them into one. And there's actually two different ways you can do that. So I'll first show you with the concatenate formula. All you have to do is type in concatenate. By the way, when you're typing in a formula, if you hit tab, it will complete it if it's listed at below. So you don't have to always type it all out. And the format for concatenate is you just click which things you want to add together. So what I'm going to do is pick this. I'll put a comma. So it's going to group anything that I put in here together. Since I only grabbed the words themselves, I still need that space in between. So I'm going to put two quotes with an empty space in between. Grab band, comma, put another space, another comma, and then blows. And so this will take all those together, everything I put in there, the three words and the spaces in between, and jam them all together. And you'll see that it says this band blows just like it does in cell C29. So we've broken it apart and then reformed it. You can also do this using the ampersand, which is the technical term for this symbol here, the and symbol. Instead of using concatenate, in this case, all you have to do, it's actually not a formula, you point to what you would like to add, so we'll point to this. If you put an ampersand, it will concatenate everything you put after each, basically each ampersand is adding a new thing to be concatenated. So in this case, I'll put the space and band 
and another space and blows. There's no need for parentheses because this is actually not, not a function. It's just part of how Excel works and you can use the ampersand instead. And you'll see that it comes up with the same result. And I typically use the ampersand when I'm, when I'm concatenating things, but depending on uh, how your data is set up or how you like to do it, you can certainly use the concatenate function. Exact. This checks to see if two text values are the same. Since we just did concatenate in two different ways, let's check if they are exactly the same. And if, hopefully, if I did my job right, they will be. So type in exact the two that you want to compare. And remember, when you're for making a, fu a function or creating a formula, you always need to put a comma in between different items in the syntax. So, equals exact, and I'm comparing the two different versions of my concatenation. And hopefully, it will say true. If it's not, it will say false. And it's true, so that's good. Both ways I went about it came up with the same result. Another very important function is the length function, which will tell you how long a string is. It's very useful when you want to grab a, let's say the beginning here. I'll put an example here. If we have one two three dash hello and one two three dash anything else, <coughs> using the length function, you can figure out the length of each cell. So first, I'll show you the length of the yellow highlighted text, so we can see how long that was. All you have to do is place in the link to the cell, close it, and it'll tell you how many characters it is. And so you see it was 34 characters. If we wanted to get a little bit fancy and put in a concat concatenation into it to add something else so that it told you more information, you could, after the length, put an ampersand, and in quotes, you could write characters. And that'll take whatever the length formula results in, and it'll add whatever I put in quotes. And so you'll see it says 34 characters. And so the reason for the examples on the top right is that sometimes you won't know exactly what you'll need to be extracting, or how long it is. And so if we wanted to extract everything to the right of the dash in the above examples, hello and that gibberish that I typed, we might want to do it in a more intelligent way. Or there, there are a few ways you can do it. Just to, as an Excel, there are many ways you can accomplish the goal, but I will show you how to use the length function to do that. So, it's actually going to be a combination of, of a couple functions. If I take the right of this cell, and I wanted to get hello, I could just type 5, and we know that it would give me the right amount. But instead, I want it to give me everything after the hyphen. In order to do that, one of the ways would be to take the length of the cell and subtract 4 from it. Therefore, it would grab everything except for the first 4, hopefully. And you'll see how it grabs hello. You can use the autofill, which is this little, when your mouse turns into a, uh, a plus sign here, and drag it down, and it'll do the same thing on the second item I listed. And you can see how that that's a way to use both the right and the length function combined to extract something where you have a variable amount of text and you want to make sure that you can grab anything after a certain number. I hope that you enjoyed the text function examples. I may start posting some different videos, not necessarily based on the functions themselves, but maybe some tips and tricks. But at first I wanted to at least show you how to form some basic formulas using some of Excel's most exciting functions. So I hope you enjoyed it.